In this video, I'm showing you my updated way of how I use edible images on cakes. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you want to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. This week I am doing a cake that I'm putting edible images on it and I filmed a video a while ago showing you how I use edible images and I just want to do an updated video because now I do something a little different and it ends up being a little easier and it makes it look a lot better. So it's a new and improved way. <laughs> um, I get all of my edible image supplies from Icing Images. I just love them. I've been shopping there for years and I wasn't affiliated with them until a couple months ago and I do have an affiliate link and I'm going to put that in the description below. They have edible printer system packages where you can get an entire printer along with icing sheets, cartridges, cleaner. You know, there's there's so many different things that you can get on that site. So everything will be linked linked in the description below. So let's get into the video. All right, this is the top tier and the bottom tier of the cake. These are iced and buttercream and in my refrigerator. And before I print out the dolls, I just want to make sure that I'm printing everything out the right size. This tier is five inches tall. And this tier is four and a half inches tall. I just want to make sure. So I think I want to print them out like three and a half inches tall each. I want them to be the same size. So what I recommend is just always go to your cake before you print them out, um, just to, to measure and make sure that you are printing everything the correct size. All right, I have, I have a PC and not a Mac. So if you have a Mac, you're gonna probably be using different programs. So I have Microsoft Word. Microsoft Office came with my computer but this is Microsoft Word. I want to come here and open a new blank document. And then I'm gonna go up here to uh, layout, margins, and narrow, because I want the margins to be narrow because I want to print, I want as much printing space as possible. So now I just want to search the dolls. She said she doesn't care which LOL dolls, so I'm gonna search LOL doll clip art and see what comes up. And she said I can pick whatever dolls I want. Sometimes also if you search LOL doll stickers, you may get some good ones as well. I, I like them when they have the white outline and that's what I wanna show you in this. She's one of my favorites, she's adorable. So I'm going to right click and go to copy image, go back to my document and right click and click paste. Now I wanna crop out all of this extra space. So right click and go to crop. And I'm just going to try to get it as cropped as I can, just getting that white outline. Good, and now I want these, there's rulers over here. So right now she's about five inches tall and I said I wanted her to be three and a half inches tall. So I'm just looking at the rulers on the left and just dragging this corner in until she's about three and a half inches tall. And then I'm gonna do that two more times. So we're doing three dolls on the cake. So I'll go back to here and uh, she's adorable. How about we use her? So same thing, right click, copy image and right click paste. Same thing, I wanna crop it just to get the white outline. Good, and now I know that this, I think she's the queen bee. <laughs> so I know she's the correct size. So I'm just gonna take this corner and drag it until she's the same size as the other LOL dolls. So I know they're both three and a half inches tall. I'll show you one that doesn't have a white outline in case you can't find one that has an outline for the picture that you wanna do. All right, I think I like this one because she has the funky pink hair and I have, I like when my hair's like that. <laughs> I think she's adorable. So again, she doesn't have an outline, so I'm gonna show you how to do an outline. So right click, copy image, and right click, paste. And again, do the same thing. So she's already cropped, which is good. So I'm just gonna drag the corner. So they're all the same height. They are all three and a half inches tall, and this is perfect. So now what I wanna do, I am clicking the middle picture and pressing the space bar a couple times just to separate them. Right, so they're not all stuck together. All right, and now what I like to do, I like to print 
from the bottom of the page. That way I can save the rest of the icing sheet and I will show you what I mean. So over here on the side, I'm going to click this and drag it all the way down to make the margin at the top very high until it is about, I don't know, a half inch away from the bottom. And then once I cut these off, I'm gonna still have this whole top part of the sheet so I can print other images on at a later time. So now I want to go to File, Print, and going to my Canon printer, that's my edible printer. The printer is already turned on, so it's gonna be able to find it. And I'm gonna click Print. A print preview is gonna show up. And in order to set up your printer to the proper settings, I will link icing images video in the description below on how to properly set up your printer once you have it. I get this nice little print preview showing how it's going to print. And then I can click start printing. And then this, this little warning box is always gonna show up. The paper abrasion function is enabled and just says like, if you wanna print without changing the setting, the print speed might be affected. You just wanna hit okay when this pops up. After you set it up according to icing images requirements, you're always gonna see this and you just wanna hit okay. So let's go over to the printer. All right, now my printer is turned on. The tray in the bottom is pulled out. These are just the regular eight and a half by 11 premium icing sheets from icing images. Whenever I load it into the printer, I load it with this extra piece facing down and I want this facing forward. This is the envelope that they come in. Just make sure after you take a paper out, you always seal the envelope right away. You think that you're gonna remember to seal it later and you won't just every time you take a piece of paper out, seal it. And a little note, always save these silver envelopes because you can store uh, printed images in here. And now I'm gonna go hit okay on my computer and it's gonna print. And beautiful. So what I wanna do, this ink is still wet. I'm gonna set this aside for 10 minutes and then I will cut them out. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes right now and I can tell that this is dry because the ink isn't shiny anymore. So what I wanna do, I wanna save the rest of this paper so I can print on it later. I have a video on how I print on saved icing sheets and I can link that below. I'm just peeling the acetate paper from underneath and I'm only peeling it off to right where the images end. And now I just wanna get scissors. It's best if you use sharp scissors and just cut them away. And I always save silver envelopes. I have tons of these. So I put the extra paper in here. And then next time I go to print, I'm gonna use this used sheet first if I only have to print a smaller image. All right, I'm gonna separate all three of these. So now the ones that have the white outline, I'm just gonna cut right inside of this gray line so you can't see any of that gray line and keep the white outline, the white border around the entire image. Okay, and I feel like the image just looks so much better having a white border around it. So I'm going to do that for this adorable little one as well. And now I just wanna show you a different technique. So I can cut a border around this one as well. I could just find you know, my own border and cut it, right? But I wanna show you real quick, if this was on like a green background, right? And you don't want any green on it, but you still want a white border, I wanna show you how to do that. So in this instance, you're gonna to wanna to cut exactly on the outline of the image which is a little more challenging because you have to be more precise. All right, now I cut her out exactly along the lines, right? And we're gonna put a white background on her. So again, like if you had her on a different colored background, um, then that, that's the instance because you might find pictures that you're like, I love that picture, but it's an ugly background. Well, cut it exactly along the lines 
And now what we're gonna do, I get a paper towel, flip these upside down on the paper towel, and we're gonna space them out. I have fondant here that I rolled out. This is just white fondant. I mix it with some Tylose powder. If you see my videos, you know I love this stuff. The Tylose powder is gonna help the fondant hold its shape. It's setting pretty hard, it's holding its shape. It's not soft, it's not falling apart, it's not too stretchy. And what I did, I sprinkled a little bit of the powder on this and I kneaded it together, roll it out, let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes so it can hold its shape and it will be easy to cut things out of it. If you don't add Tylose powder to your fondant, when you cut something out, the knife or the blade is gonna drag the fondant and it's not gonna be a crisp, sharp cut and it's gonna be so annoying. So this stuff is a lifesaver. I have some piping gel here and a paintbrush. So what I'm doing, I'm getting enough piping gel on the paintbrush. I do not want these to shift, all right? Because I'm gonna paint all the way to the edges and I'm gonna get piping gel on the paper towel. If there's piping gel on the paper towel and then this shifts around, right, onto the piping gel, there's gonna get piping gel on the top. So you don't want any piping gel on the front. Hold it down with your fingers and paint the whole way and I'm painting off of the image onto the paper towel. Now I wanna get the side where my fingers are. So I got a little more piping gel on the brush push it down so I'm holding it gently lift my fingers off my hands are clean <laughs> and then come to the other side I'm just putting my thumb down and gently painting making sure that the image is not going to shift lift it up nice and now I can flip it over and put it on top of this white fondant and the other one that has the white border I'm going to do the same thing And same thing for this one. The, the cuts are a little finer since I cut her right up against her outline. Now when I put these on the fondant, I wanna make sure that there's enough space in between them. Like I don't wanna put her so far next to her because I need to cut an outline around her. So just have them evenly spaced and just lay them down gently, right? I'm trying to let, let her like gently slide down so no air bubbles are forming underneath nice and just press down making sure that all of the edges are completely down on the fondant the ones that have the outline on it are a little easier I have an exacto knife and this paper towel is wet and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep wiping my blade on this paper towel because the fondant is going to start sticking to it and it's going to be a little difficult to cut the ones that have the outline I'm just putting the blade right against the outline and using that white outline as a guide to cut the fondant. And then, like always, once you cut something out of fondant, there's just jagged edges. So I'm just taking my fingers and I wanna smooth out all the cuts and just smoothing out the fondant just so it doesn't look jagged and ugly. It looks smooth and clean and pretty. I have a cutting board, I'm just gonna set this on it and then I'll do the other two. So let's do the other one that has the white outline. All right, now to get the outline on this one, I want the outline to look like this, but it's gonna be a fondant outline, but from far away, you're not even gonna be able to tell that there's a difference. What I need to do is get a little close and I wanna cut an even border the whole way around. Just using the image as a guide as to where to put the curves. So right here I'm going to stop and then I'm going to go out a little bit for the ear and come back in, right? So I'm just following the curves of the character to get the outline. I find that like coming down is a little hard to cut. I like to start somewhere in the middle or at the bottom and cut up. For some reason I just find it easier to see where you're cutting when you're going up. And same thing, I'll turn this around, that way I can just start cutting up. And same thing, just taking my fingers and smoothing out the cuts. So you see how this one has a white fondant outline and this one has the icing paper outline. However, when they're on the cake, 
and you're not so up close, there really isn't a difference. So these are two different ways to get borders around your image. And I just like the way it looks, having the little border. So now what I wanna do, I'm going to let these dry flat. And um, sometimes you go, I find that the image starts to curl upward. So what I'm gonna do, just let it dry flat like this for a couple hours, and then I'm gonna turn it over. I'll turn them all over so the other side can be exposed, and this is gonna help keep the images drying flat. I'm just gonna let them dry here for a little bit so they are flat, and just leave them out at room temperature, not covered. They don't have to go in the refrigerator or anything, and I'm going to let them dry for a couple hours until I put them on the cake. So there you go. How easy is that? I just love using my edible printer. I, ever since I got it, I use it weekly. I use it all the time. Very, very important that you must print weekly tester sheets on your printer to keep the ink running through the system. You, you don't want the ink to dry out because if it dries out in the print head, it's gonna clog and clogs can get difficult to clear. If you get a very bad clog, you're gonna have to buy an entirely new printer, happened to me. <laughs> But, uh, you know, so I only tell you from experience. And also, a lot of people ask with edible printers, can I just put the edible cartridges in my regular printer? No. Do not do that. There is toxic ink running through your printer, and you do not want to eat that. Even if you put the edible cartridges in there, you still have the old ink in your system and it will not be edible and somebody could get injured and, you know, if they eat something that's toxic like that. So you have, to, you have to be able to invest in a completely new system. If you do not wanna make that investment, maybe you can find other people in the area or maybe some grocery stores who could print images for you. But look how much better it looks. I'll, I'll find a picture where I didn't cut the border around the images and then compare it to the picture where I do have the border around the images. And it just looks so much better and it's easier to cut when you don't have to cut exactly around the border. Now, I did with that one doll, I cut around the border, but I gave it a fondant border and it still gives the same look to it. So you have a couple different options there depending on what the picture is that you're working with. And also, I just wanna make a note that if you do licensed characters, you run a risk if you sell them for, if you sell the cake for profit. And that goes for any licensed character on any cakes. You can give it as a gift, but if you decide to sell any licensed character cakes, there is a risk that is involved with that and you have to decide if you want to take that risk. So I think that is it. If you guys have any other questions or comments, leave them below. And you can follow me on social media and my website. <laughs> Everything is listed in the description below as well. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.